created, consecrated, appointed, sent, confident, faithful. These are the words God ascribes to Jeremiah as a child, words that stretch back to before Jeremiah was born, if you take the scripture seriously and literally. Jeremiah earned the tag, the weeping prophet, for all the struggles he endured. God called him to speak the truth to power. What's God calling you to do this morning? What about your congregation? Did you hear that? I, I, think I, I think I heard God is calling us here, right now. Are you ready? Jeremiah warned Israel that their kingdom would fall to the Babylonians because the Israelites insisted on breaking right relationship with God's peace and justice. They didn't want to do the work of the kingdom anymore because it was easier to invest in systems of idolatry, greed, and false prophets, maintaining the status quo at any cost. So Jeremiah was called to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. In our United Church language, we would say that he was called to live a faith whose actions profess that in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. Jeremiah was scorned, shunned, and finally thrown into a well to starve to death so that King Zedekiah's officials could claim that they had no blood on their hands. Jeremiah is the stuff of biblical legend. So, of course, those words apply to him and his faith in his time, when there was great instability and conflict. We get it. God called Jeremiah. But what does that have to do with us? Are you called by God? Am I? Is this church called by God? Are you a prophet, a leader, a, a revolutionary? Like Jeremiah, would you say that God called you before you were even formed? We're teachers, parents, grandparents, refugees, engineers and lawyers, plumbers and fisher folk. Here in Marathon, Ontario, we are forestry workers and miners, pulp makers and pipe fitters, carpenters, teachers and doctors and nurses. We're not called to face off against kings in God's name, are we? Let's have a show of hands. Who's going to follow in Jeremiah's footsteps and be the first down the well? So what about us? Is God inviting, daring, challenging, celebrating, creating you and me? Well, anthropologist, practitioner, and storyteller Marion Hall once said, yes, pretty much. He said, worship is when you do what you were born to do, and what you're doing makes an indelible mark on humanity that no one, no one can erase because no one can make it but you. Worship is, worship is when, because of the art that you do, because of the architecture that you do, you do it so divinely artfully that human flourishing comes about and humanity is not the same because of your everyday life. Worship is vocation. It's vocari in Latin. It's when you sing the same song on Tuesday that you're at your board meeting that you did on Sunday in your worship. How are you doing your work? Because God is saying, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are new, Matthew 9, 37. God's calling you to roll up your sleeves. Will you? Will we answer the call together? God is calling you, just as Jeremiah, my, Jeremiah was called, here, 
Now, in and through your work, your teaching, your, your babysitting, your parenting, your knitting, your fishing, your painting, your plumbing, your retiring, whatever you do, God is calling you to work for a new kingdom's birth. Are you ready to deliver? Jeremiah's faith reminds us that church is not just a noun, it's also a verb, a way of seeing and experiencing the journey of life and inviting others to do the same. It's not a destination or an end. It's an orientation for how to begin living again, living in a way that is profoundly shaped by the spirit of love and justice, that's turning over tables and building bridges between all of us. Jeremiah was a prophet in the time of King Zedekiah. That was his calling. That was his work. What's yours? What's mine? What's your God-given work together, our God-given work together? Created, consecrated, appointed, sent, confident, faithful. These are not just Jeremiah's words. They are God's words for you and for me. God is inviting, daring, challenging, celebrating, creating you and me as people of faith, as communities of faith. Listen, listen, God is calling us here now. Are you ready? Pluck up, pull down, throw out, overthrow, build, and plant. What happens when we commit those words to flesh, to the way we see one another, and the choices we make for the sake of this world as disciples of Jesus? Some everyday people in St. John's United Church in Fall River, Nova Scotia, did exactly that. With the eyes of the church, they looked around at their community. What would be their work? How was God inviting them to serve? They could see youth struggling with couch surfing, addictions, peer pressure, bullying, and a lack of a safe place to simply be themselves. They decided to pluck up and pull down some of those very issues to throw out and overthrow those plagues on our youth to build and to plant something new. God was calling here, now, and they were willing to open their hearts and minds to listen. What became the KD Lunch Ministry would be their God-given work. Every Thursday, every Thursday, volunteer teams from the congregation would set out a grand central table in their hall. This was the grandest of, of communion tables. They would fill it with fresh bread, salads, fruit, and of course, homemade sweets from the kitchens of the congregation. They also supplied all you could eat craft dinner. The lunch was free and all were truly welcome. They boldly invited students from the nearby high school to come and eat and drink without price. At first, only a few students responded. Eventually, hundreds came. So many that, so many that to the congregation's delight, the students filled the hall and some had to eat KD in the pews. Students would ask, what is this place anyway? When told it was a church, many were surprised they'd never been inside one. When asked, what's the catch? What do you want from me? Why are you doing this? Volunteers would respond, there is none. We want you to know you're loved. You are seen. You matter. We do it because we choose to. A group of students arrived early one day, forlorn. Their friend had just been in a car accident that morning. Distraught, they called a volunteer to join their conversation. They asked if it was okay for them to pray for their friend. 
The volunteer responded, of course. One youth spoke up with the question on everyone's heart. But we don't know how. Can you show us? I can try, said the volunteer. What was your friend's name? Tell me about them and how you're feeling. And then let's pray. Over the years, graduating students made banners writing messages of thanksgiving to the congregation. One read, without Thursdays, I don't know if I would have made it through this year. Thank you. Those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, listen to what I am telling you. This is the call. This is the work. Today, our ancestor of faith, Jeremiah, calls us. Jesus Christ calls us. The Holy Spirit calls us. God is calling us to transform our everyday work, our skills, and our talents that we all take for granted by turning them into plowshares and pruning hooks for the kingdom that is already almost here. Listen, God is calling here and now. Are you ready? God is inviting, daring, challenging, celebrating, creating you and me as people of faith, as a community of faith. You are created, consecrated, appointed, sent, confident, faithful. God says, you are gifted, called, and chosen. You are mine. Siblings in Christ, good news. You are the church. United in how we give and share who we are and what we have, let's give the Spirit our answer. Over the past five weeks, you've been asked to consider making a financial commitment to the ministry we share together. This is the place. Now is the time. God is calling. Are you ready? I invite you to make that commitment by filling out your pre-authorized admittance. You'll notice PAR, form online, or in person today. Here at St. John's United Church in Marathon, Ontario, you can make your authoring through PAR, online through canadahelps.org, or by e-transfer. You can also stop by the church and pick up a box of offering envelopes. If you believe in the love and the justice work of our church, both at home and around the world through mission and service, ministries like those described in the Minutes for Missions distributed annually by the United Church of Canada, or consider the suggestions from the Gifts with Vision catalog, then right here, right now, united, let's give our answer. If you believe in the mission and ministry we share together as people committed to loving and serving God's people through ministries like assisting with the local Marhaven project to support refugees or support for the local breakfast program at the high school or, or become actively involved in the high school annual powwow and support all local initiatives for right relations with indigenous neighbors then right here, right now, united, let's give our answer. May our actions declare our birthright as a city on a hill, as a lamp whose sole purpose is to never be hidden, but to shine the affirming love and justice of God for the sake of all. And all the people said, amen and amen.